students welcome to the physics lab today we will be performing an experiment by name ohm's law so the aim of the experiment is to determine the resistance of the wire per centimeter by plotting a graph of potential difference that is voltage versus current the apparatus required for the experiment is battery eliminator rheostat plug key milliameter voltmeter wire of particular length and connecting wires so we are finding a resistance per unit length of this wire you can see here this is the wire which is the resistance we need to find out that resistance using ohm's law now first we'll start to know the statement of ohm's law that when a current is flowing through a wire through a resistance current flowing through it is directly proportional to its potential difference so current flowing through it is directly proportional to the potential difference across this wire provided the temperature these are the external conditions temperature pressure dimensions remaining constant this is what he said but this is true only for the ohmic conductors they ohmic conductors obey ohm's law now we'll start with the explanation of all the apparatus over here that is the circuit diagram in the circuit diagram you can see here this is a battery eliminator it is a battery eliminator this battery eliminator is used to give the dc current to the circuit now we know at mains we have ac which is 220 volts whereas we want a dc current which is giving a constant steady supply and various values you can adjust on that eliminator so the eliminator converts ac into dc and this is the eliminator after that next is the emitter i have used here milliameter because we are getting the current in milliamps so it's an emitter used to measure the current then comes one more meter that is a voltmeter it is used to measure the potential difference across this wire then comes the next point this is the key you will see the key and the key has a air gap inside when it is open it is exactly working like an insulator because air is an insulator so no current flows in the circuit so when there is no current and it is off condition it is this way and on condition key is like this remember that so about the key key has almost zero resistance so the whole current flows through the key when it is on now comes the rheostat rheostat has got three terminals rheostat has three terminals 1 2 and 3 so this is the rheostat it's a ceramic body you'll see it in the laboratory now i'm showing the image and this rheostat has one terminal here one terminal here and there are wires wound around it very close to each other they are insulated mostly the wire is made up of constantor or manganese the wire has a high high level of resistivity whereas it has got very very low temperature coefficient coefficient of temperature is very low for this alloys like constantor and manganese this is the wire here there is a small opening you if this opening you can see it is very very minute there the wire is live meaning open but all other places it is insulated when they are very close to each other so when they are close to each other what will happen they may touch each other they are not touching because of insulation on top of it here there is a steel rod and for the steel rod there is a terminal here where you are connecting this is the third one and above this there is a sliding contact sliding terminal sliding contact so this sliding contact is above this 
Now what happens is this terminal 1, terminal 2 and terminal 3 out of it terminal 1 and 3 are connected. You can see here 1 and 3 are connected and 2 is left free. This way we are using a rheostat as a variable resistor. Let's see how. When this particular position is here exactly at the end, this almost at the end, only these many wires are connected. So one terminal, one wire is connected and, and the third terminal is connected to this. So this third terminal actually here, at this point is the third terminal. So this much wire is in the picture. And when this much wire is in the picture, length of the wire is less. And the length of the wire is less in contact. And you know very well, resistance is directly proportional to length of the wire. This is the concept. This is the principle. If this is directly proportional to length, length is small, resistance will be small. Now I keep on moving this. Suppose this position comes here at this point. So length of the wire is increased. Resistance will increase. So resistance will increase. And we have very well you know. When the resistance increases, current decreases. So if you want very very small current. Almost zero. You need to bring this here. So if this is at this position. What will happen? It is almost covering the whole wire. So whole wire in contact in between. So resistance is large. Because the length is large. And because of that the current is almost zero. So, this is the concept behind using a rheostat. So, how are we using the rheostat? We are using the rheostat as variable resistor. There is one more use of rheostat which we will be doing in a topic in the experiment PN junction diode. It is used as a potential divider. At the moment, we are using only two terminals 1 and 3. 2 is left free. And as you keep on moving this 3 terminal along this wire, the length keeps on changing, resistance keeps on changing, and the current keeps on changing. So in a way you can control the current by using a rheostat as a variable resistor. Now let's do one thing. We'll do one thing. We will now think about these two meters. If in these two meters, first one is emitter. What is there inside an emitter? It is a galvanometer. And a very small value, very, very small value shunt resistance is connected parallel to that. You know very well what is a galvanometer. What is a galvanometer? Galvanometer is that instrument which is used to detect the current as well as to know the direction of current. So this is a galvanometer. So this galvanometer, this is one end, the current is flowing. If this was not there, the whole current will come here and the current is, galvanometer can manage a very small current in microamps, almost 1 milliamp. So therefore, we want more current to flow in this meter, then we connect one more wire as a shunt. And this value of this wire is very, very small value. Bahut chota, very small value, this wire has, resistance value. And therefore, when the current comes in milliamps, only galvanometer will manage the microamp current, Ig flows through it. Whereas here, almost I minus Ig current will flow through this. This is my current I. Ig will flow through the galvanometer, which it can manage. And remaining current will flow through this particular value of shunt. It is called as shunt resistance, which is a very small value. So the large current is manageable in this whole instrument. So, the whole current, large current is manageable. If you go to see when this is very small, the whole system has a very small value of resistance and therefore it can manage large current. This is the concept. Now, remember one thing. This milliameter should have so much small resistance so that the, almost the whole current flows through the, whatever current comes here has to flow through the emitter. So, this is the first thing. Now, we go to the next one. The next one is Voltmeter. It's again a galvanometer. No change. But we are connecting a very large value of resistance. I'll call it large value of resistance. So the current comes here. And you can think whatever current comes here from here, it will not allow because the resistance is very large. And if the resistance is very large here of the whole system, 
This is the voltmeter now. The whole resistance is very large. It will not allow the current to flow through it. So you will be using this exactly to find a potential difference. Remember one thing, voltmeter, an ideal voltmeter should not draw any current. Where an ideal milliameter should allow the whole current to pass through it. Any meter we attach in a given circuit, it should not disturb the circuit. That you have to remember. So now we have learnt about what is a voltmeter, how it is constructed, what is a milliameter. Milliameter and voltmeter are meters which are introduced in the circuit. They should not disturb the circuit. What is the role of this? To measure almost the whole current should pass through it. But what is the role of this? No current should pass through it. We should measure the perfect potential difference across the wire. So this is all about the battery eliminator, key, rheostat, milliameter and voltmeter. Now we need to find the resistance. So let's take the readings. So we have to adjust this so that it is on 0 and milliamps here, 0 voltage. Then you put it on, you know that 1 volt, what is the value? To 1.5, what is the value? Like this you have to take some. 5-6 values and after finding the values find the resistance. Then you need to plot a graph of the voltage versus current. Now you know that according to Ohm's law current is directly proportional to voltage. This implies voltage also is directly proportional to current. Now V is equal to R into R. This R is a constant for a given wire, for a given material. So R is a resistor for a given wire. So wire will have some length, some area of cross section. And you know very well resistance is equal to rho into length of one area. Rho is called as resistivity, length upon area. So resistance depends on these dimensions. It has got some particular length which will be given to you. Particular area of cross section. So you know that is a resistance. But are we finding resistance this way? We are not finding resistance this way. What we are doing? We are just finding resistance from the Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. So you are plotting a graph. You get a straight line passing through the origin. Then you will find a slope. 0, 0 origin. This value is V. This value is I. Is equal to resistance. Now, you know the resistance of the wire. What is the aim of the experiment? Aim of the experiment to find resistance per unit length. You are given a length of the wire say what the one wire which I have taken now is say 134 centimeter. That is the length of the wire. I'll write it here. Length of the wire is say 134 centimeter. If that is the length then resistance per unit length. Resistance I got the value say I get the value somewhere around say 25 ohms upon 134. Ohm per centimeter. You have to calculate this. And that is the result. So this experiment is very very simple. Basic. And this you will know, do in no time. And only thing is that. In every experiment. You should know the concept. And you should know how to use the instrument. So remember one thing. First in the beginning. You must keep it at the far end. Rheostat. So that you are having. Large resistance so that the current is almost zero in the diameter. When you are performing an experiment, there is one more thing which you have to see. The range of the ammeter. Range of the ammeter from zero to how many milliamps that range is. Similar range of the voltmeter. If at all your voltmeter, voltmeter here, this first one is not on zero. It is somewhere this side of zero. So we say there is a negative zero error. If it is on this side of zero, right and left, this is the positive zero error. So to beginning itself, we need to see whether your pointer is at zero position to start with when current is zero, voltage is zero. If not, you have to take a screwdriver and remove the error. There is a screw in, there is a screw and you have to just adjust the error so that the pointer exactly is at zero to start with. So this is all about the Ohm's law experiment. Let's go to the lab and perform the experiment. Thank you very much. See you next time.